All right, I want to do one of the hypothesis tests uh, for the ratio of population variances when you have a left-tailed test. On our examples, we only had right-tailed tests. And so if this works a little bit differently than our normal testing when we're doing our left-tailed and our right-tailed test when we're doing an F test. So it says, a psychologist studied the alcohol consumption patterns of people in two age groups. One group consisted of people aged 21 to 35, and the other consisted of people aged 36 to 50. The psychologist interviewed random and independent samples from each group. She assigned a score from zero to 100 to each individual. A score of zero meant no alcohol consumption. According to the factors such as frequency and the amount of alcohol consumed, the results from the study are summarized below. So we have our table for age 21 to 35 and then 36 to 50. The first row gives the sample sizes, the second row gives the sample means, and the third row gives the sample variances. Assume that the scores of all people aged 21 to 35 are approximately normally distributed. Assume the same for the scores of all people 36 to 50. Can we conclude at the 0.05 significance level that the variance of the scores of all people aged 21 to 35 is less than the variance of the scores of all people aged 36 to 50. So since we're doing less than, we have our left tailed test. So my null hypothesis, I'm going to have the variance of the first over, I'm gonna highlight that, the variance of the second. And that is going to be greater than or equal to one since we are doing that left tail test. Now, if you're using Chrome, you should be able to use your word shortcut. So I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna hit Control C to copy. I'm gonna hit Control V to paste. And then I'm gonna change my greater than to my less than symbol. If you are using um, a different browser, you may not be able to copy and paste. Otherwise you can just type it in again but we are checking for less than, that's our claim, our alternative hypothesis. And so we are then going to find the value of our test statistic. In order to do that, I'm gonna grab my graphing calculator here, and I'm going to take the variance of the first divided by the variance of the second. So 153.76 divided by 289 gives us a test statistic. Whoops, I better do my test thing first. My test is a F test. My degree of freedom into my numerator. I have 25 here. So 25 minus one would be 24 for my degree of freedom. Degree of freedom in my denominator, 18 minus one would give me 17. Then I can put in my test statistic, which is 0 0.532. And again, if I hit undo, I got that by taking my variance from my first divided by my variance of my second. And most people have been doing okay there. It's this part here where you are finding the critical value at the 0.05 level of significance. Since this is an F test, and my F test only goes to the right, what I have to do is, whoops, I have to do F sub, and I have to do one minus my level, my critical value, 0.05. I could just put in 0.95, but just to point out, since it's a left tail test, I'm gonna do one minus my critical value. Degree of freedom in my numerator is 24. The degree of freedom in my denominator is 17. And so if I calculate my value there, I get 0 0.483. Now, wants to know if we conclude the variance of the scores of all people aged 21 to 35 is less than the variance of the scores of all people aged 36 to 50. If I look at my test statistic 0.532 and compare it to my critical value 0.483, my test statistic is greater than 0.483. Since it's greater than, we have to assume the null is true. So since it's greater than, um, my null hypothesis is true, can we conclude that it is less, the less was the alternative hypothesis, it is not less, so we have to say no, it is not true. I'm gonna check that there, and we can see there that we are correct in our 
assumptions. I am going to stop the video here and find one that is a two-tailed test so I can do another example on a separate video.